how much he loves us. But we're grateful for what we do know, that he poured his life out on the cross so we could be set free from the law of sin and death. Amen? Amen. I didn't even turn my battery pack on this morning. Oh, you know what? I left it on, so it's not going to work. Oh, it is. It's working. A friend of mine wanted to hire some painters, and he wanted them to paint his porch. After a few hours, the house painters came back for the payment because their work was complete. Before leaving, they told my friend that they enjoyed painting his car, but it really wasn't a Porsche. <laughs> The guy takes his sick chihuahua to the veterinarian. They're immediately taken back into a room. Producer in a Labrador walks in, sniffs the chihuahua for 10 minutes, and leaves. Then a cat comes in, stares at the chihuahua for 10 minutes, and he leaves. Finally, the doctor comes in, prescribes some medicine, and hands the guy a bill for $250. This must be a mistake, the man said. I've been only here for 20 minutes. No mistake, doctor says. It's $100 for the lab test, $100 for the CAT scan, and 50 for the medicine. <laughs> you wouldn't want that by treating your horses, would you? Do you still have the horse that bit your finger? The horse that bit your finger. No, he's gone. He's gone. Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, he's gone. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there was no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. In Proverbs 18, 10, The name of the Lord is a fortified tower, strong tower in the King James. The righteous run to it and are safe. We're talking about the names of God, the names of the Lord today. There are 951 names by which we refer to God in the Bible. 951. I'm going to read them all off. No, just kidding. I don't know if I could find them all, but that's what it said. God referred to himself in his encounter with Moses at the burning bush. To, he said, I am. He called himself that. He said that was his name. Exodus chapter 3, 14 and 15. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am sent me to you. Verse 15, God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. I am who I say I am. The only name that God referred to himself as. If you give something a name, then that describes that thing. If I say this is a microphone, then it can't be anything else but a microphone. It describes what it is. If I say this is a pen, it's a writing instrument, you know that, and it can't be called a microphone. If you have horses in your barn, and you call it a horse, then nobody's going to think it's a cat. Because that describes what it is. But God is indescribable. Amen. I am who I am. You can't put a name on him that describes him because descriptions, names are limited to that description. He can't be limited. No specific name can be given to fully or completely describe God. We know what his attributes are, but we cannot limit God by a name that we give him. In other words, God is beyond description. He is beyond limitation. Amen. 
see, I see these people, you recall, they almost made me beg for amens. So I was going to make a sign, and they found one and got it for me. <laughs> so I don't have to say amen, I don't have to do that, I just push the button. Many scholars think the name Yahweh is best understood as meaning that he brings into existence whatever whatever exists. Yahweh means or became Jehovah. Jehovah and, and Yahweh is the same. The many names of God in the Old Testament describe things that he does or what we can count on him for. But he is not limited to those names because he is limitless. Amen. So these are ten names here that are names for who he is in the sense of how we see him or how we relate to him. Some of these names of God and what they mean, Elohim, it means God. This name refers to God's power and might. He is the one and only God. He is the supreme true God in a world that promotes many false gods and religions. He is the one on whom we can fully rely. He is sovereign. He is the one we completely trust. He is the mighty one over all of nature. His world, this world and the heavens above, our creative God, who has worked wonders by his hands, God reminds us that he is Elohim every single day. And the second one, Yahweh, is derived from the Hebrew word for I am. God's name Yahweh is one of authority. It is the one that holds great power and says to all who hear, I am the one true God, follow me. As far as I can tell, that's the only name he ever gave to himself, Yahweh, or I am. Number three, Abba. Abba means daddy, father. It's the most intimate form of God's names showing us his character as our loving daddy. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, and the spirit calls out, Abba, Father. That's in Galatians 4 and 6. Then the next one, number 4, is El Elon. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these correctly. But that means God Most High, El Elon, or Elion, Elion, is a name that is used throughout the Old Testament, revealing God is above all gods, that nothing in life is more sacred. He is indeed the Lord Most High, the one who reigns supreme. He is greater than any force of darkness in this world. He is bigger than any problem that we might come up against in this life. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the Lord, praise to the name of the Lord Most High. That's in Psalms 7 and 17. The next one is El Roi which means the God who sees. The name El Roa says to us that God is watching over all. He sees what's going on in our lives, and he knows when we feel lost. Hagar gave this name to God. When Hagar had run away to a desert place far from those that she felt hurt and betrayed by, we see God surround her in so much grace and care. He didn't leave her alone in her troubles, nor will he leave us to fend for ourselves through difficult times. And we all have them, don't we? <laughs> if you're a certain vintage or more, you're gonna, <laughs> you've had some hard times.
his, this story of God's name reminds us that he's always close. That he sees us when we feel that no one else does. And it reminds us that he cares. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have seen the one who sees me. Genesis 16 and 13. This one, is, everyone knows this one. El Shaddai means God Almighty. Reminds us he is all powerful. He is the mighty one. We can find rest and refuge in his shadow. Psalm 91, first two verses. Whoever dwells, you know this verse, in the shadow of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And the second verse to that is, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. The seventh one is Yahweh Yaira, or Jehovah Jaira. It means the Lord will provide. God will provide for our needs. Every one of them, there is a difference between our needs and our wants. But he is faithful, he is able. Nothing is too difficult for him. Nothing is out of reach for him. Sometimes his timing is different than ours. Maybe we feel that he's forgotten and hasn't heard our prayers. Sometimes we get our needs and wants mixed up. And other times he knows what is better for us than we even know ourselves. We can trust him that his timing is perfect and that all things are possible for him even when we can't see a way out. Genesis 22, 14. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to, they, to this day it is said on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The eighth one was Yahweh Nissi. Means the Lord is my banner. This is the name that God that the name of God that proclaims his protection, leadership, and deliverance for his people. After de the defeat of the Amalekites in Ex Exodus 17, is where it says in verse 14 and 15, Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Verse 15, Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. The ninth one is Jehovah Rapha. It means healer or the Lord who heals you. This name reminds us that God does heal. All healing comes from him. If you get it through a prescription, it still comes from God. If you get it from a chiropractor, it comes from God. If you get it from a physical therapist, it still comes from God. Often he doesn't do it the way we think he should, the way we want him to, or in the time that we expect. But God is sovereign in all things. We can't demand from God that he does it on Tuesday. It's up, it's, it's up to him. But we can be sure that we will not take any illness into heaven with us. I'm not going to have a missing part of my thumb in heaven. <laughs> And she, she's missing a part of her finger because the horse bit it off. She's not going to have that in heaven. I'm not going to be too tired to stand through a service in heaven. I won't do that. People aren't sitting around in heaven when they're worshiping God. They're standing around the throne, kneeling, throwing themselves down on their faces and crying, holy, holy, holy. Wow. Exodus chapter 
15 and 26. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Number 10 is Yahweh Shalom. Yahweh Shalom means the Lord is peace. God is the only one who is able to give us the peace that passes all understanding. That passes all of our own wishes and desires and our own understanding of what's going on around us. His peace is the ultimate peace. Judges 6.24, so Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, The Lord is Peace. To this day it stands in Oprah of the Abizarites. Our Lord and Savior Jesus, of course, is, is, is God. And he referred to himself as the Son of Man. He's the Son of God. He is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But he called himself the Son of Man, often. He identified himself with humankind. He allowed himself to be made lower than the angels and came down to our level so we could relate to him in a more intimate way. Why do we call him Jesus? What about that name? The angel appeared to Joseph and said, in Matthew chapter 1, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So that was a directive from heaven, through an angel, a messenger angel, an order, you are to give him the name Jesus. Luke 1.31, and you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you were to call him Jesus. In Matthew and Luke, both Jesus. Yeshua became Yehoshua. In English, it became Joshua, now known to us as Jesus. Those names are all the same. Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yehoshua, and Yeshua. But in the form of Yeshua or Joshua, it was, a, it was a common name back in those days, in what we call Bible times. But Jesus came to be among common people, the Son of Man. And he came and had a, a common name. And that was directed from heaven. But the name Yeshua means the Lord is salvation. That's what it means. Jesus became not only man, but a very common man, lived and moved among the common people. One time he said, I have no place to lay my head. The name Jesus was given to him in humble obedience. Yeshua was a common name among the Hebrews at that time. He came into common surroundings with common people, with a common name, which referred to God as Savior. He was known as Yeshua. He was referred to as Rabbi or Teacher. The Bible calls him the Word, John 1.1. 1, 1. The Word was with God and the Word was God. We call him the Christ, the Anointed One, Messiah, Son of God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Good Shepherd, Redeemer, and many others. His name, Jesus, even though a common name in those times, is now the name above all names. <laughs> His name is the name above all names, even though other people carry it and have it. First of all, number one, we are under His name. Philippians 2, 9 to 11, Therefore God exalted Him to the highest place and gave Him the name that is above every name, 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We are under his name. Okay. Secondly, we yield to his name. Luke 4, 17 and 21. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, unrolling it. He found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the, uh, the oppressed free. Verse 19, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Verse 20, then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. We yield to his name. Freedom is in yielding to him. Freedom from the bondage of sin. You can yield to bondage or you can yield to Jesus and get that freedom. Freedom from the tyranny of the hell-bound world system. Freedom from the father of all lies. Freedom that can only be found in the word. His name, the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. That's logos in Greek. Before we yield to him, we are yielded to the enemy. You can't be neutral. You're going to yield to somebody. You either yield it to the world and the enemy or you decide to yield to Jesus. Freedom that can only be found in the word. Before we yield to him, we are yielded to the enemy. And we are captives, prisoners. Because he's the God of this world. But Jesus came to fulfill the prophecy and to set the captives free. And I know all of you and I know you've been set free. Number three, we are blessed by his name. We are to expect his presence. Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Number four, we are honored to be called by his name. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, you know this verse, don't you? Who were called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Christian, Jesus people, people of the living God, called by his name. We are authorized, number four, to use his name. John 14, 13 to 14. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. We are promised the results. I will do it. Often our understanding of what he will do, and when he will do it, isn't the same as his. Our wisdom isn't anything like God's. But if he says he will do it, then he will. I have to add, sooner or later. Sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes it's years. Sometimes we have to wait until we're in heaven. Mark 16, 17, And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. So we have a name to trust in Psalm 20 and verse 7. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God.
It's a name to be praised. Psalm 113, 2 and 3. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So these are just some of the names of how we know God and how we know the things that he does. There's no limit to him or to what he can do. He cannot be limited by any name. Jesus came to dwell among the common people and he was given the name Jesus. It was an order to be called that name. But there, these titles are how we know about him. Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, Lion of Judah, Healer, Savior, Soon Coming King, Lamb of God, Good Shepherd, Redeemer, the Word. Those are just some that I could think of. And John, well, we re read this before with John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. That was, that's, that was the name. It was Logos. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God, referring to Jesus. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. So Jesus was the creator with the Father. And it was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Everyone in, in Romans 10, 13, who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's the greatest miracle and the greatest healing that can ever happen. You can walk around with all kinds of crippling things and God can touch you and heal you. But if you're walking around in sin, then you're headed, you're on the broad way and you're headed for destruction. And when God calls you and heals you from the sickness of sin, that's the most awesome miracle that we can experience. Last year I was able to lead nine people to the Lord. Every one of them had some connection to Teresa. All different kinds of connections, but every one of them. Last Sunday I was able to lead a lady to the Lord, Teresa's friend. <laughs> Teresa rounds him up and God saves him. It's an awesome thing thinking about the different names of God and just what they represent but he's not limited to any of them because he's God you can't limit God and Jesus is God he's not just limited to Prince of Peace or this or that he's God it's good to think on these things it's good to think and ponder because there's a lot more than just those that I mentioned but I wanted this morning, if there's anyone in here that needs prayer, that needs a touch in their body, and if, if so, come on down here and we'll get some people together around you and I'll anoint you and uh, we'll pray the prayer of faith and we'll expect you.